Good afternoon, everybody. Here's your update here for this afternoon. Um, obviously, my truck, I just got it washed. Still hauling grain like a banshee. Um, we really are hoping by the end of February, things are gonna slow down a little bit. One of the reasons why we're pushing on this grain movement so much and trying to push to get these contracts out is because it's been really mild. As you can tell, we're actually up at the North Farm and there's no snow. So sooner or later with these mild temperatures and in March at some point, they're gonna knock us from primary winter weights down to uh, secondary summer weights. And then uh, once we get closer in April, they're gonna actually ban the roads, a lot of the roads for us down at the South Farm for sure. Uh, so that way you can't even take a semi on them. And a lot of the RMs, the rural municipalities, they'll do the exact same thing to these gravel roads. They'll ban them. So you can't even take a truck empty on them, never mind loaded. So by the time that those road bands come off, we're already in the field seeding or right near that anyways. So we are trying to get as much grain moved, everything that we can get moved. And then that's probably the last grain movement until after seeding that we're going to do. So that's the reason why we're pushing extra hard trying to get that done. I uh, just got my truck washed over here at uh, the Quill Lake uh, Colony. Um, I asked them if I could do a video one of these times. They have a great, they have a great big massive shop behind the uh, bins and they have a big wash bay in there. And I think it's big enough they can actually pull drills in. The one wash bay that we built or is still building down at the South Farm um, we can pull combines, tractors, and everything, but we did not build it big enough to bring in drills because typically we don't move our drills. But these guys are close enough to the main highway that they can actually uh, pull drills in that custom guys and dealerships have to be happen to be swinging through to wash the salt off. So, but anyways, um, the uh, <laughs> the uh, wash bay that we're building down south, we're hoping to have that completed sometime this summer, and. Uh, I guess only I, my drill is the one that's going back and forth that I would like to wash sometimes, but it is what it is. So anyways, I typically get these guys to wash my truck and trailer when I'm up here, especially if I'm getting near done hauling grain. They do an awesome job. I pay them to do it. And uh, you know, they'll, they'll grease my gates, grease everything if I ask them to do it. And uh, they'll scrub everything down. They, do, they get in with the fire hose. They got fire hoses to actually go inside and they'll do a really good job, so. Big thanks to the to the boys over there at Quill Lake. All right, let's go see what kind of trouble we can find ourselves into here. I guess I should uh, I should note that uh, I'm not actually done hauling grain. We're just near done. Hopefully, we'll be done by the end of this month. The reason why we wash is because I don't like things that are dirty, and I keep thinking about that 9:30 and how I should load that thing up on a trailer my Pinto trailer and bring that thing up and get that thing washed plus my Pinto trailer because my Pinto trailer is dirty too. I better text or call these guys and see if they can do that too. Maybe when I finish up here I can just unhook my grain trailers or get them to wash them again. Just like things clean, you know. Alright, let's go uh, pick up some grain checks. So that's one of the great things about hauling grain is you get to cash up so that's the fun part mostly because it just goes in the bank and then it goes right back out again because you got to pay some bills or John Deere wants their money or Case wants their money somebody always wants their money but we're just super thankful that we actually have something to sell unlike the South Farm <laughs> oh man oh careful Mike let's not get going too fast here we're only doing 30k don't want to get the trailers all dirty look there's no snow guys there's actually almost less snow at the north farm than the south farm isn't that insane Like it feels like it's April 1st or something.
work my way up to the highway here. All right, guys, so we're fast tracking. It's 7 p.m. here right now. And uh, I don't, don't ask me why we have two clocks. We got one clock here and then I got another digital one up there. But anyways, so we're in Dafo, Saskatchewan. I was hauling some lentils to these guys and uh, this is a specialty plant. So I thought I would just quickly talk about specialty plants and compare them to like the big terminals like your Viterras, your Richardson Pioneers, your G3s, all that fun stuff. So the majority of our crop, like you got your wheat, your durum, um, canola, barley, oats, maybe not so much oats, but barley for sure. You got your big major crops and they always typically get sold at your big terminals. You know, those giant concrete blocks that are out in the paperweights that are out in the middle of nowhere, right? And the great thing about dumping at those terminals are is you can swing through, offload, drive out, walk into that office and pick up your check. It's that fast. When you want to haul specialties, and specialty crops would be like your pulses, your, your chickpeas for sure, uh, green lentils, large and small, um, red lentils, you can, some, you can take those to terminals as well, I guess, but also specialty places. Uh, some flax, oats would maybe, there's some millers, so you could take your oats too. But anyways, a specialty place would maybe look a little bit something like this. Some are bigger, but let's be honest, the majority of them are actually smaller. This is actually a pretty big facility. So uh, lots of times they'll just have a bunch of legs kicking around. There's always sea cans coming and going because lots of this stuff is going into sea cans. And uh, so anyway, I was offloading some lentils right in there. And uh, you know, you can't just roll in and get your check. So most places, we call these the fly-by-nighters and that's no disrespect to anybody here, but it's a risk to farmers because these guys, most specialty places aren't gonna pay you until 10 business days, then they'll mail you your check, okay? But there's always somebody in the newspaper or on the news of, you know, they buy high and then the market goes down and then, you know, they get themselves into some, maybe their buyer bailed on them because, you know, they're just literally buying it for a country. They're buying it for another buyer. They're just the middleman. <clears throat> Excuse me, they're the middleman. So if all of a sudden their buyer like eats out, it's like, yeah, I'm out of here. And then they're left holding the bag. Uh, sometimes it's not good for them. They have to declare bankruptcy. They can't pay the farmer. Then the farmer's out a whole pile of money. And it's kind of, you know, I have never been in that situation, but I'm always scared to be in that situation. So um, unlike when you go to a Viterra or Richardson uh, Pioneer, you got your G3s, all the big buyers, you can roll in, roll out, got your check. Your check is always good. These places always takes a lot longer to get your money. Um, that's just how it is. Now, some of these places like to uh, direct deposit your money. I actually don't like that. I like to see the physical check. And the reason why is because when you get your physical check, it comes with a summary of all your tickets. So it doesn't matter if you took one load to this facility or a Viterra, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Anytime you're gonna get your check, it's gonna come with a summary of your loads. It doesn't matter who the buyer is, okay? So when you get that, whether you get one load in there or 15 loads, you're gonna have a paper or multiple papers with a summary of all your loads. It's gonna have February 14th, uh, unloaded 42 metric ton, dockage was 2.8%, moisture was 14.2, there's no shrinkage because it was dry, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Per load, and then next load, February 15th come in, you actually brought in 40, whatever it is, you get the idea. They'll have a summary of each one of your loads. Now Mike, don't you already get a ticket when you offload that? So aren't they really just doubling up? And yes, you're right. When you dump, doesn't matter if you dump at a specialty facility or if you dump at a big terminal, um, you always walk out with a weight ticket, right? I've shown you guys that before. Your weight ticket has all the same information on it. But they will still send you out a summary, which is good because I've been known to lose my weight tickets. And good, you know, if all of a sudden you took six loads, you wouldn't want to forget that you took six loads and then you lose one and you're only cashing up five. Don't worry, they keep track and then they'll send you out a summary. So uh, the reason why I said this in a long-winded way around is because when I have a physical check, 
with all the summary, I can actually sit down, whether it be in my truck right here or at my kitchen table or in the tractor, wherever I am, and I can look at it. But when they email it to you, because it's gonna be a direct deposit, that means you're just gonna get emailed the summary. Lots of times I don't get to my emails right away. Um, and when I do get to my emails, you're, you're trying to blow it up and look on it on your phone and then scroll over on your phone. And then sometimes, I'm just, for me, myself, I can miss things when it's in my email. So I like a physical copy. Um, but that's not always an option when you're dealing with like specialty places because maybe their head office is in Toronto or Vancouver, okay? That's how that goes. And then they will send you a check, I guess, if you wanted to buy mail from there. So that anyways, that's the dealio. And uh, that's a little snippet about uh, dropping off at facilities, especially the, we call them the fly-by-nighters, no disrespect, but the fly-by-nighters or the, the big terminals. So. Catch you guys later. Adios, amigos. Oh yeah, I guess I should point out too, like obviously your terminals, it always goes on rail cars. Like they're loading 100 car spots, right? But when you load at or offload at a specialty facility, um, they also can load cards, but they also load C cans as I quickly alluded to and I realized I probably should have given a little more information. Like they'll load C cans or they'll put it, they'll bag it. And the, in those seat cans, I guess I should say, I have seen both where they literally have like a conveyor and they back the conveyor into this 40 foot or 20 foot seat can and they're literally offloading raw product, dumping it, just dumping it right on the ground of that seat can. And I have seen them where they uh, have like uh, a liner. I guess I th it probably does have a liner in there and then they have like it's boarded off so they can only fill like half the can that way because otherwise how would you close the door it's just going to spill out right where they got this anyway it's pretty interesting to see and then in other places they just bag it it just goes in 50 pound bags and then they just stack the bags or put them on pallets and stick them in the seat can and then from there they would obviously get loaded on a train or on a semi and go down to the US or maybe they're doing both and then going to end up out on a boat somewhere so this these facilities do more of that I should have asked if they do more of that versus loading cars because where I've dropped my lentils off not at this facility but a different I've I use I'm not married to any one facility it's pretty much whoever gives the best price and who has the best reputation you're not gonna if if this facility which I whom I know pays well if this facility was offering, say, 37 cents a pound for red lentils, but then there was another fly-by-nighter, I don't know, whatever, 100 miles away, that was offering 45 cents per pound, it's probably too good to be true. You know what I mean? Like, if if it seems a little fishy, it probably is. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I have gone to different places, and I have literally, I've, I've talked to some other uh, local farmers about this, but I've literally looked around at the facility and I was like, whoa, oof, I'm like, as long as their checks are good, I don't care, <laughs> and then you see them, like, they're loading sea cans like crazy, and there's trucks coming and going with sea cans, and they're, like, it's, it's pretty cool, it'd be pretty cool to do a video on that side of it, because you guys always just see me drop off at terminals, terminals just load cars, cars go to the west coast, then they go on to a boat. But these types of facilities, uh, most of it, I shouldn't say most of it. I know for a fact a lot of it goes in Seacan Zone. That'd be pretty cool to do a video with. We should talk to some fly-by-nighters here. <laughs> All right, see you guys later. You guys have yourself a good one. Adios.